<clears throat> okay. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm good, Hannah. How are you? Good, good, good. Okay. So, this is going to be a very special video for a few reasons. Number one, I started filming this yesterday and I just started talking and then it's just like nothing came out right and I wasn't saying what I felt like I needed to say so I, I you know put it off for a little bit took an extra day prayed about it some more and now we're here ready to go uh, number two this is of course an understanding the Bible episode five it feels like I've done more than five but here we are um, number three uh, this is technically my 30th video since being on YouTube and woo that's exciting and number four since we're celebrating might as well throw in the fact that I now have over 60 subscribers which is great because my goal for the year was only 50 and I've only had my channel a little over three months and I've already exceeded that year-long goal so that's just amazing and I'm so so grateful for all of you that watch my videos and everything like that you are awesome what else was I going to say oh number five haha <laughs> fifth video number five whatever this is going to be a very basic video that's my goal I hope that it's not too long and it's just basic I probably should have started off this series with this video, but I didn't for a reason, and now we're here, so that's great. Basically, today, I just want to talk about the basic gospel of what Easter is about, since that was just this past weekend, why we celebrate it, who is Jesus, and things like that. I kind of want to share what I would tell to someone who didn't know anything about Christianity, Okay, so bear with me. I took some notes. I'll show you my notes. See? Took notes. Notes, 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 notes. And wait, there's more. I have another page. Turn, turn! My page wouldn't turn. See, I have another page of notes. So clearly I, I thought about this a lot and I prayed about it and it was just something I really, really wanted to do because I feel like it's a message that a lot of people can hear. And I'm not, you know, a qualified pastor. I'm not going to, this isn't going to come out perfectly. I might miss some things. I might explain things too much, whatever, whatever. But above anything, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask me. But also, your best resource is to just go to the Bible and pray to God himself. Because, of course, he was there. He knows what happened. Okay, so first of all, all of this, like I kind of just said, all of this comes straight from the Bible, and if you, you know, if you go to the Bible, you can see for yourself. So this is not just stuff I'm making up. Alright, so first let's start off with who is God? Okay, so God is our creator. He is the one that, you know, came up with the idea of humans and mankind, and he, he made us in his own image. And... From the get-go of the Bible, it starts off right off the bat, you know, in the beginning God created the heavens, oh, what? the heavens and the earth, that's Genesis 1-1. From there, it goes on to talk about this seven-day period where God created these different things, you know, he made light and darkness separate, and he made day and night, he made time, he made space, he made land, water, animals, etc, etc, etc. Well, on the sixth day, God created mankind, and it says that he created us in his image. On the seventh day, he... Is this still recording? Yes, it is. <laughs> on the seventh day, it says that he rested. So all that happened. And his intention when he created human beings, he created us um, to live in this garden. Garden of Eden is where he made the two first humans, Adam and Eve. My pencil just fell. <laughs> okay, anyways. The Garden of Eden was this place of just 
pureness and honesty and tranquility and peace and he just created mankind to rule over all the other creatures all the fish in the sea the animals on the land birds in the sky and you know just to live off the land and just to live in peace just worshiping him well that doesn't exactly go as planned as we now know in 2016 how you know, interesting our world is today. We certainly do not always live in peace and tranquility. So basically what happened was, <clears throat> there's this dude, his name's Satan, slash the devil. If you haven't heard of him, God bless you because I, he's terrible. Anyways, he was an angel a long time ago up in heaven with, with God and he decided that he wanted to have more power than God or he wanted to be on his level so because that was the completely wrong attitude that wasn't humble at all like God's intentions for us were God kicked him out of heaven so from that point on Satan his life mission is just to undermine God and his people and that's a whole different other conversation about solely just about Satan and what he does, you know, what he did uh, back then in biblical times, what he does now, and he's involved in everyone's lives, and it's like this, you know, out of the whole span of time ever, there's this war going on, and we know that at the end of the war that Christ went, that God went, but in between, in the middle part of that time, and this also can be broken down to just your life. In the middle part of that time, there's going to be battles. And now we're in a position that we can kind of, we can choose whether we want God to win this battle or Satan to win this battle. And it's, and it's in our hands. And that is part of what happens when you have free will. Now, how we got free will was... Satan, the character I've just been describing, he disguised himself in the garden as a snake, as a serpent. And so he's just chilling along or whatever and, you know, Adam's off hunting a wildebeest or something, I don't know. And uh, he see he spots Eve. And he's talking to Eve and he's like, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? And Eve says, no, that's not true. She just told us not to eat from the one in the middle of the garden. And Satan's kind of like, oh, silly Eve. You should eat from that tree because, you know, once you do, you'll have the same knowledge that God has of good and evil. So first of all, let me stop you right there. Already, from the get-go, the intro of his character, we're already seeing huge manipulation because God's intentions were never for us to know evil. But what happens? Eve's like, oh, okay, that sounds pretty good. You know, that doesn't sound too bad at all. So she eats an apple off of a tree, and then she gives some to Adam, her husband. <clears throat> And an apple in itself is something that's so symbolic and you see it all the time, you know, Snow White and the poisoned apple. You know, these are just little symbols in today's time. So anyways, when that happens, obviously Eve and Adam both had disobeyed God and their creator and they listened to Satan. So from that point, all humanity changed and there were certain consequences that happened for example pain during childbirth that was enforced um, kind of like a punishment almost and just different consequences arose from that one of which being death and being sin and now at this point sin had entered the world oh my nose it's just sorry at this point sin had entered the world and the penalty for sin was death that was the only thing that could kind of equal out or you know redeem your sin there is this there is this period of time where whenever someone would sin whenever someone would mess up that they would have to go to the priest or you know the church or whoever was above them and they would have to make a sacrifice and they would pick their very best and most pure you know sheep or lamb or something along that nature because you had to have you know really pure blood to cover up your sin 
So that brings us to Jesus. So all of that happened in the Old Testament and I really, really encourage you to go and you know read the Bible and I know it can be super overwhelming, but there are a lot of interesting things that happen in the middle between you know human hu humanity going downhill and the New Testament. But we'll get to that later. So now the New Testament. So basically what happens is God sees that this is not really working out, you know, that there eventually there's just going to be no more lambs because everyone keeps sinning and it's just terrible and nothing that he originally intended is getting accomplished. So God makes a decision and he decides to send his only son, which is basically him, uh, down to earth as... A man so he basically finds this really you know pure-hearted woman young woman named Mary and who is a virgin so there's no way she could be pregnant and he sends an angel down to Mary and the angel tells Mary you're going to get pregnant with Jesus Christ with God's son and he's going to be the Savior so of course Mary's like what? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I've never, uh, that's not possible. I can't get pregnant. And eventually she comes to term with the fact that she's been honored basically to carry Jesus Christ and have him born from her and grow up as a man. There's a little wrench in the plan though. Uh, Mary had a fiance at the time. She was to be married to this dude named Joseph and of course you know she it was a big deal back then if you were pregnant before you were married and things like that so you know Mary tells Joseph and everything and he's like what you're pregnant but we haven't you know what I'm saying you know what you been doing with the mailman Mary um <laughs> And eventually he also comes to terms with it and they both graciously accept uh, Mary's destiny basically to uh, give birth to Jesus and for them to raise him and all of that. So flash forward, you know, there's the whole nativity scene where Jesus is born and the manger and blah blah blah, blah things like that. So basically, Jesus grows up, and of course, from the get go, you know, Mary and Joseph, and basically everyone who meets Jesus is aware uh, that he's different. And Mary knows why he's different and what his destiny is. So Jesus gets older, and he's a man now, and he decides that it's time to begin his journey. So he goes out and he finds 12 men, these 12 dudes that, you know, couldn't be farther from imperfect, and he decides to make them his posse, basically. They are going to be his disciples. They're going to follow him where he goes and watch his teachings and how he heals people and tell them about why he's there and the truth about Jesus Christ and God our Savior. So, I don't know about you, but me personally, if I were to get a posse together, you know, I want like some models, some superstars, maybe some priests, some pastors, you know, you know, some really cool kids. That's not what Jesus did though. He got fishermen and tax collectors and murderers and, you know, all of this just mixture of these just imperfect men which is a true testament to why he was there in the first place. So he, him and his 12 disciples go around and they're there with him while Jesus is performing all these miracles. And it's, it's very, very interesting and fascinating about how amazing he truly was. So that happens and flash forward a little bit. Now we are at this supper and you know it's just a typical Tuesday night or whatever with Jesus and his squad and Jesus is like look let me break it down for you this is what's gonna happen so you know that up until this point every time someone sinned the sin had to be paid for with some pure blood from a lamb or another innocent creature right you know the deal because you've done it before well, look, the reason I'm here is because I'm God's son, and I have the most pure blood, and I am going to be crucified and pay for 
everyone since. Sound good? Okay, fam. So, of course, the disciples are like, what? We don't want you to die, you know? Things are fine how they are. We love you, Jesus, blah, blah, blah. Jesus is like, look, it's okay. I'm not going to actually leave you. You just have to wait. You just have to trust me. So, Jesus says, he, he takes this bread and he says, you know, let's break this bread. And he says, take this as my body. And then he, you know, pours the wine and he says, this is my blood. And it's a representation of Jesus being inside of us. And we still do that tradition to this day. That's called communion. We get a little cracker and a little bit of grape juice. So, flash forward a little bit and Jesus is crucified and he's up there. He's, he's never sinned. He's never made a mistake. He's the purest, holiest man. And he's up against this other dude that's like crazy and killed people and, you know, whatever. And basically, um, the ruler at that time was saying, you know, which one should we crucify? And he wanted to crucify Jesus, but they, the people in the crowd were trying to crucify the other dude, Barabbas. But then, when Pilate... Pilate's his name, the, uh, the ruler of that time when Pilate was like, okay, well, you know, we'll let the people decide, but then it ended up being where they crucified Jesus, and there wasn't really a lot of justification for it because Jesus had never done anything. So that's what happens. They crucified him, they put him on a cross, they put nails in his head. It's really gruesome and terrible what they do to him. And they crucify him, and on the cross, Jesus says to God, he says, you know, this is while people have been spitting and hitting and just, just terrible things to him. Jesus says to God, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So, even then, you know, this man, he's forgiving these people in the moment while he's being such, you know, while he's being ridiculed and, you know, hurt and all of this stuff and, and he's forget he's like, Father, forgive them. They they don't know. They don't know who I am. And so what happens? Okay, Jesus dies on the cross. That's what happens. So up until this point, Jesus is this really cool guy who can do miracles and who didn't really do anything wrong and now he's been crucified. Well that sucks. So of course, the disciples and everyone are just, just incredibly disappointed and upset, and it's terrible. But what happens? This part is why we celebrate Easter, and this is probably one of the biggest things that differentiates Jesus as a Savior versus just this guy that can do some miracles. Um, three days later, they... Uh, they put Jesus in, you know, a tomb and they put a big stone in front of it and they had, you know, 40, 60 guards, like tons and tons of the strongest, best guards guarding his tomb. And three days after they put him in the tomb, um, they find that his tombstone has been rolled away and the body is gone. So then what happens? Jesus goes and visits his disciples and he's still got the holes in his hand, you know, saying... It, it's me, you guys. Like, the, here's my, you know, um, injury to prove it. And he explains to them what's going to happen, how he's going to descend into heaven, but that now his disciples and his followers know the truth, and it's time for them to go share the truth with everybody else. That through Jesus, your sins have been paid for, and you can now just live a peaceful life for him and that you have to ask his spirit to come into you and and live inside you and that kind of takes us to where we are today so now in today's time we have free will we have the choice whether we want to ask Jesus into our hearts or not that's completely our choice and you know this was just the basic of the basics of the gospel there's of course you know a lot more that went into it a lot more that happened over time before Jesus was born and everything like that and 
you know, it's it's a really interesting story, but like I said at the beginning, I would of course recommend, you know, reading the Bible for yourself. Like, read it and see if I, you know, missed a part or you find something that's just really interesting or whatever. And also, if you're like me and, you know, reading isn't always the ooh, most exciting thing you want to do, there is the Bible series and it's on Netflix. It's just called The Bible and it's only about 10 episodes and it just it just kind of briefs you over from the beginning of time to Jesus after Jesus rose again and it just it shows you and it's just wonderful beautifully representing the Bible and it's just great. So I would very much encourage you to, you know, if you're curious about this story, if you think this is interesting, if you think, hmm, you know, this this Jesus guy, he sounds pretty chill. I, I, I might could dig with him. I would very much encourage you to learn more. You know, of course, ask me questions. If you go to a church, ask your pastor, ask a parent, a friend, um, you know, read the Bible. Like, look it for yourself. And if you don't have a physical Bible, then there's Bible apps. I use the Church of the Highlands app, One Year Bible. There's tons of different things you can do. Watch the Bible series on Netflix. There's tons of different ways to access answers to your questions and more information now and honestly above anything the best thing the the best thing you can do is talk to Jesus yourself just just pray and prayer doesn't have to always be you know okay kids bow your head and close your eyes literally the whole point of being a Christian is to have a relationship with Christ so just you know, sit on your bed, sit on your front porch, whatever, and just start talking. God can hear you. Jesus can hear you. Just start talking to Jesus and, you know, just see what he has to say. So, anyways, this was longer than I wanted it to be, but I think this is going to be really good. And hopefully this um, helps a lot of people kind of fill in some blanks. And, you know, of course, if you ever have any questions or suggestions for things I should talk about in the future, just comment below. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. And that's about it. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And I will be posting a vlog probably this Sunday or Monday. And don't forget how special you are. And I love you. You're beautiful. And that's it. Okay. Bye.